In case you were wondering, no, the couch really isn't going anywhere. How you guys doing? Joe here. Thanks for coming back for another video. Uh, today we're taking a look at a pretty interesting gun, mainly for its aesthetics. This is a t 1911, just FYI, you probably read the title. But t was actually in the United States a long time ago. It just a lot of people didn't know the name t -Sauce. It was originally imported under the SDS Imports brand. And they were called Zig, Z-I-G, Zig Duty, Zig Carry, Zig This, Zig 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 Ah. But now they are more colloquially known as T Sauce. Uh, they are out of Turkey. Uh, some people hate that. Some people like that. I'm of mixed when it comes to some quality of some firearms that come out of Turkey, because they're not all perfect. Nobody makes a perfect gun. No such thing. Not even Glock perfection. If Glock perfection was actually perfection, there wouldn't be an aftermarket for it. But I'm going to give these guys the benefit of the doubt because they've actually come a lot further than a lot of companies in a short time. This one is borrowed from Liberty Arms. You can check them out online. I can't link them, but just Liberty Arms, Harrisonburg, Virginia, Google them, tell them I sent you, say, hey, that was on the Jiminy Show, and gosh damn it, I, it was on the couch, and I want one. But let's go ahead and show it to you. If you follow me, and you're subscribed, and you do all that stuff, you would have seen this in a community post. But this is the Liberty or Death, Join or Die 1911 in its most basic GI format. And we'll come back to that in a second. Before we do that, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because I put up at least two videos a week, at least three to four shorts per week, and I live stream three times a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays right here using the vertical live on my phone. It seems to be the most popular way of doing it these days. And it's helping the channel grow as well as maintain during the early part of the year, which is the shittiest part of the year for uh, ad revenue. So help the channel grow. Join, do two, 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 two giveaways every month. One in the beginning of the month for members and one at the end for subscribers. So get signed up for all that good shizness and get in here and have some fun. All right. Now that all the bill paying is out of the way, let's dive into this thing. T-Sauce. Gives more stuff for their dollar than any other manufacturer of 1911s right now. Number one, first thing they do, look at that, two mags. Freaking a lot of companies could be paying attention to TSAS. Mags are not expensive. Give extra mags. But they send now in a hard case. They used to come in just a cardboard box, a very plain cardboard box. It was like an AliExpress box back in the day, but they've definitely stepped up and improved what you get. Decent foam in there, uh, has extra cuts there, but you really can't fit because they sell an optics cut in 1911. They sell everything. In fact, I have one of their optics cut guns coming and uh, they need a bigger case for that. But yeah, inside the box, you get things like since it's a special edition, you get some plain grips in case you actually want to go out and shoot it and you don't want to damage these grips. Awesome. Trigger guard lock, which is good enough for a lot of people. Uh, if you're going to actually lock up the gun, sometimes I recommend getting a cable lock, but at the very least that will prevent some little people, aka children and or midgets, from getting their stubby little meaty fingers into the trigger. Also comes with a bushing tool, which is actually a nice thing to see. Some companies don't, well most 95% of companies do not include this when you purchase a 1911, and some of the guns are very tightly fit and do require it. That's why I'm leaving it out of the box. We'll put that back. Uh, just to get it out there, the price on this gun is like $600, $610. So for a 1911, it's not a terrible price. One place where t -Sauce is actually ahead of Rock Island. Rock Island still makes more 1911s than anybody else. However, t in 2020, or as of 2020, eliminated... MIM parts, MIM parts. You may hear people say that from time to time. MIM stands for metal injected molding. So if it's a metal injected molded part, it just means you're going to see a seam. It's kind of like all those Duplo blocks and all the toys you see that have a little seam down the plastic because it's a giant metal block that squeeze shut and then the material be it plastic metal etc is injected into the mold and it forms to the part. 
Is that the worst thing in the world? No, there are plenty of companies, even high-end companies, that use some MIM parts. Kimber, I believe, uses some MIM parts in like some of their controls. So it's not the end of the world. However, the fact that TSOS has eliminated 95% of them in their guns, things like the hammer, the safety, the slide lock, slide release, the beaver tail itself, when you eliminate as many sources of potential failure as possible... or it it's a good thing because a bit of air in the metal construction, even though it doesn't look like it because it's coated, but let's say you had some air get into there and it could crack the slide lock, slide release could break down the line. Some of the internal components could have some, the firing pin, things like that. If they aren't made out of solid, in this case, stainless steel, then you would have some major issues down the line. Another place where TSOS is ahead of the pack is in... Many apologies and a thousand camels to you. I just had to cough up something. It's 4.30 in the morning. Is in there doing their special editions. TSOS and Auto Ordnance and Canik are like three of the most prolific actual manufacturers that do these custom style guns. Ruger is pretty good at it too, but they usually rely on companies like Talo to do their guns. But right from the factory, this is a 1911 chambered and 45 ACP. It's called the Service. Um, 1945 or 1911 A1 Service 45. That's all it says on there, right? But you can also see right here, still says SDS, SD, 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 because SDS is the parent company of TSOS. But I call it the Liberty or Death gun. Now, I would actually own this gun if it was not one simple thing. Now, this is not just going to be sunshines and roses and rainbows and me pounding sunshine up the butt of TSOS because number one you'll never see that happen on this channel but number two is some of their choices are a little bit interesting now this is based on the A1 design it's got some of the uh, early A1 later A1 revision like it's got a flat mainspring housing with no lanyard which means these are newer style rear mainstream rear mainspring housing uh, it has just a standard uh no extended beaver tail, so this is just a grip safety. I, I don't call these beaver tails because they don't go up. Spurred hammer, closed trigger, non-adjustable. But it, then it has the enhanced cut up here for the ejection port. Then you come up to the top, and it has just standard GI sights. And I don't like that particularly because that sight dovetail is stupid, and you can't really get much in there. And then that's where just... That's ridiculous. That's stupid. That's moronic to only do offer it in the absolute basest slide just because you're putting the cuts in there. Why don't you guys have the option for customers to be able to get one that has nice adjustable sights or at least interchangeable sights so they can upgrade them and then you could have a higher end version of the gun. This one's only 600 bucks. I know people that would pay $1,000 if they could get one with the, you know, some more improved adjustable trigger, the extended beaver tails, ambient controls, and nice sights. A, even a set of Novak style three dot sights would be better than this garbage. But people, I guess at TSOS, just kind of think in a, it's a collectible just wall hanger versus, hey, you know what? Somebody might actually take these guns out and shoot them. So Am I super mad? Yeah, I am because it's prevented me from buying like four of their guns. I was going to buy like, um, I don't remember if they called it the fly girl or not, but they had like the airplane bomber style ones. And then they had the Deadpool gun and I just refused to buy it because it was the most basic version of the gun. Who the frick wants that shiz? Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the trigger. Actually, let's run the slide a little bit and you can hear it's a little bit gritty versus... Another company's gun. This is the Auto Ordnance 45A1. Another GI style, but this one's 750 bucks, and I want you to listen to the difference in the slides. So not quite as clean, and again, that's only $140 more than this one, so... Not a whole lot of excuses for that. It needs a lot of polishing work. I would rather pay more money and have a gun that's slightly better than to have to start with a $600 gun and put $200 in labor in it just to make it as good as a $700 gun. So that's just a minor niggle. Uh, you can see they use Metgar mags, which puts them a big step ahead of uh, 
Rock Island. Sorry, I just ran through seven different company names in my head as I was saying that. But yeah, Rock Island switched to ACT. Maybe TSOS got a better deal to become the exclusive buyer of Metgar for their uh, like stock mags. But yeah, go with Metgar before you go with uh, ACT. Please, please. Or KCI. Run from KCI. I know it's Korean and I'm Korean, but uh, fuck that. I do not... I do not mess with my own family. But yeah, anyways, let's get back into it. GI style, so it has a half-length guide rod, and it has the short trigger in it, which I approve of. I like the shorter trigger feel. This is a basically a short one as well. They do, I don't know what the other gun is, but my um, Mitchell Mauser has a long style. But yeah, very short. Take up is right there, and then... It's on the heavier side for a 1911, acceptable heavy side, so it's more like five, five and a half pounds, but it's pretty crisp. Reset, right back to the wall, kicks you out a little bit past it. It's very audible, pretty tactile, pretty good. Has the standard size controls, does not have extended slide lock or uh rear safety on it no memory notch so grabbing it is you got to make sure you get that full grip on it but again if you have a proper grip you're going to disengage the safety just gotta be careful because i ride my safeties and this one comes back a little bit further versus say that one which has a minimal lip this one comes all the way back to the edge so when i'm on this one i can still get a really good grip on that rear safety so it might be again Go with the upgraded stuff, guys. Don't be a dick. Why would you put an upgraded safety and then leave a standard beaver tail? Sorry, I don't mean to bag a little bit. It's a very minor thing, in my opinion, to have wrong with your gun, but it is still there. Uh, the safety is pretty definitive, but I wouldn't call it schmoove. This one is, by comparison, easier to sweep up and down. Whereas this one is a little crunchy. It actually hurts the finger because of how sharp the edge is. I mean, I mean, it actually dents your finger. Minor things, but for a new shooter, they may put them off 1911s a little bit just because of the fact that you're going to get a slightly compromised experience with the gun. Disassembly is real easy. Use your bushing tool. Turn the bushing far enough to get your recoil spring out. Excuse me, your your plunger. And then, wow, okay. You wanted to grab in there really good. I like to pull the spring out right away. Keep an eye on which end was open and which end was closed. This end goes into the plunger. This end goes onto the guide rod. It's just a very common way of doing it. Once you've done that, bring the gun to the takedown notch, which is back here. Yeah, I can just hear the way things are dragging inside. Again, it's not the worst thing I've ever felt, but it's a $600 gun, guys. There you go. Go ahead and slide the top off. Half-length half guide rod, so it's not going to be in there really well. Uh, it's very dry inside, too, so even just a little bit of lube would probably help this guy. You can see how dry things like the barrel bushing are. Has a standard style locking lug, so it comes right out the front. And take a look at the inside. This thing is bone dry. You can see the chattering on the finish from this thing sliding back and forth. So I would take and polish that out if this was my gun. You can actually see the level of schmutz in there. Uh, you can see how it's actually ghosted in with the serial number, but that's not required here in the United States. So who gives a shit? Go ahead and polish that down. Uh, it's only required on the frame in the United States but yeah then I would take all their coloring and coating off the inside of these rails this thing would become very smooth very nicely cut but again it's just a little annoying when they they don't go that little extra step I like T-Sauce I really do and hopefully their Night Stalker double stack is going to be a little bit nicer but geez uh, obviously you can tell that these were all painted before they were assembled totally fine with that but you can also see that they painted literally everything i don't like my pot my my minimal feed ramp if you want to call it that to be polished uh, or uh, painted i like though to be bare metal so if again if it was mine i would take all the finish off the rails up here off of all of that and that would smooth this gun out that would probably bring the slide but more in line with that one and then i would probably work on the trigger but again i'm a bit 
bit of a tinkerer, so I do that. Uh, I have many videos showing how I do that. I'm just not going to redo that on a gun that isn't mine. Has the full length rails. Uh, you'll see aluminum frame guns. They'll cut right here to open that up because that's a binding spot on aluminum frames. But when they're full stainless like that, they don't need it. Series 70 style, which is something I applaud TSOS for. They've been sticking to that because as an importer, if they had gone with Series 80, they would have saved on the importation tax. But it would have increased the price of the gun and the complexity of it. So kudos to TSOS for taking a little bit extra hit. Um, the more safeties you have in a gun, the better your uh, importation price and agreements can be. Because this already has the grip safety and the external manual safety. Adding a drop safety is just overkill on a 1911. It really is. If a 365 doesn't need a safety and a 320 doesn't need a safety, your 9mm definitely doesn't because at least the 9mm has the externals. But yeah, not bad. Uh, I really should oil this before I put it back together, but it's not my gun, so we're not going to. Just remember to oil it, whoever buys this thing. Reassembly, yeah, you can just... Yeah. Like that. Yeah, I don't like the way that sounds. But, again, not my gun. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to go ahead and put your barrel back in, start your bushing. That does explain why it feels a little shunky versus the other thing. Take your guide rod and your spring. doesn't matter if you're going from the front or the back. It really doesn't matter. Line it up like that. Make sure your link is in the straight down position as you're holding the slide like this. I like to keep the spring in there because it keeps that half-length guide rod in position, at least until you get the gun started back together. Oh, dry, dry girl. Wow. Like I said, very dry in there. What I like to do is I like to take my slide lock slide release, run it through there, and just make sure that the barrel seated in the right position. Then I bring it back to the assembly spot. Lift up for the love of God, otherwise you're going to put the idiot mark in your gun. Do not blame me if you happen to. And put your slide lock back through the spot. Take your bushing and your plunger and all that fun stuff. Push it down in there. The spring is not too heavily sprung that I can't do it with my fingers. But if you do prefer to use a base of the mag or that guy, feel free to. But luckily the spring is not like a... 14 to 16 pound spring it feels like a 10 pound spring and I can at least do that with my hands once you've done that rack it Test it and make sure it's still fire. So yeah, that is a long-winded way of looking at the T-Sauce 1911 GI style liver Liberty or death Join or die gun. I like again. I like the concept of the gun I just hate the fact that they used a base GI to do it charge an extra 200 bucks Run with your Night Stalker design with that cut on there, all these laser etchings, and you would have a winner on your hands. So that's my opinion of SDS and TSOS. I know for a fact that I would have bought the Deadpool and this gun had they been in the newer design uh, because they decided they didn't want to do that. Well, then you know what? They don't get my money. So... If you like to see any other guns, just go ahead and make sure to leave me a message, leave me a comment, all that good stuff. Come back for another video. Make sure you remember all that good stuff. And, as always, I will be honest with you later.